Ah, it's probably not going to happen. Okay. Try CD Sports now. I am talking to Caleb Calhoun of allfortennessee.com. For my money, the best off-season vol site. It's also pretty good in the and uh, uh, but before I get to that, I do want to remind people, top of the hour, Rick Staples, representative out of Knoxville, state representative, he introduced the sports gambling bill to Tennessee, which is now going to become law. Uh, it's not going to be exactly how he foresaw his uh, original plan for sports gambling in Tennessee, but it is coming, and he's the guy that started it, so he's joining us at 1 p.m. to tell us how it will all work out. Now, at 1.30, SoCon John Hooper talking all things Southern Conference and their transfers and such. Uh, there was a big JUCO transfer for the Tennessee Volunteers before we get to the depth chart. You know, the secondary last year, uh, except for, I don't know, maybe Goodrich, it just wasn't all that good. Uh, but they, so the Vols go out, they do the Jackie Sherrill thing. They pick up a Juco. What do you know about the cornerback coming into play for the Vols? Is he going to start right away? Uh, our, well, he's actually for next year's class, our green. Okay. In 2020. Well, um, so I don't know too much about him. I know that it, I, I would say that my bet is he's not going to start right away. I think he has depth. Uh, the only reason is at corner specifically, I, I think Bryce Thompson and Alante Taylor have the cornerback spots locked up for the next two years. Um, if, there's, uh, if there's one area where I think Tennessee is actually in pretty good shape for the future, they've done pretty well recruiting in the second. John Flowers did not get a four or a five-star ranking was because he was playing baseball in the spring and wouldn't go to the recruiting camps because of that. I'm and telling I, you, this is, we're yeah. We're just going to judge on what they, we see on the field? No, no, <laughs> absolutely. No, I was telling the story of Bob Lichtenfeld, who is a guy who has a reputation. I used to write for him, Caleb Calhoun of all for Tennessee. He famously told the Washington Post once, I can tell if a player is going to make it in 15 seconds. Now, if that's not the most prejudiced thing I've ever heard, I don't know what is. I mean, and, and you know, I, I, so, so, here's a stopwatch. Oh, that's a that's a tenth of a second slow. He's D2. I mean, that's that's the only mindset you can have. And, yeah, I, I, I again, I used to cover recruiting and, you know, our uh, seventh best fullback prospect in the country would wind up. A story that came out, uh, and this was a, a few weeks old, and it was about how after the NFL draft isn't coordinating with the five star Maybe they're not that good. Maybe you got your prediction wrong. Oh, no, here in Recruiting Ranking Central, we never could have uh, predicted a player at five stars that was actually three or a two star that would go on to catch the uh, winning touchdown pass in the college football game and then go on and play for the Raiders like Hunter Renfro. That could never happen. No, even if it did. I mean, I just... Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah. Hey, I... Uh, yes, go ahead. Safeties, uh, defensive line, whatever. And none of the units of the football team in 2017, they ranked on the top half of the Southeastern Conference. I found that, oh, Tennessee, we've got to rank them high. I think they're preseason 23 because they're Tennessee. But and suddenly I'm like, wait a minute. There's talent here at wide receiver. There's, you know, talent at uh, running back. I get asked, what is your opinion of the horses that Tennessee brings in? There are some optimists saying nine victories if they win a bowl game. But, uh, you know, as looking through the depth chart, I don't think it's going to be one of those cases like it was the last two. Yeah. <laughs> but if he does work out, that 
the Florida game, you said, okay, yeah, this could be a struggle. And everybody hoped they could tell, they could give you that. What game do you think it's going to be? Would it be BYU? In the third game of the year. Honestly, they look great in that win against NC State. Mm -hmm. And... Just so many other things. And then, um, you know, and then, you know, you saw back in, you, you brought up, it, it, I, I kind of, we would have thought the five best teams were all in the SEC West alone. <laughs> I think if they get their uh, probation uh, overturned, they may win the SEC East. That's that. I'm not saying bet on it. I'm saying they're a dark horse contender. That's what I'm saying about Missouri this year. They got a real great offensive line and a good quarterback coming in. By the way, what do you think about Troy being scheduled in 2020? I mean, you don't figure this is going to be a challenge November 21st, 2020. It's just sort of more, oh, okay, this year... Troy, uh, non-Power 5, yeah, it fits the uh, pattern. Two non-Power 5s, uh, FCS, BYU. Next year it's Oklahoma. After that it's Pitt. Uh, but what were your thoughts on uh, scheduling Troy? Any surprise or any thoughts? You know, I actually liked it. Um, I, I, and I wrote about this last week, how Tennessee kind of returned to tradition as a, in, this, in the sense that you're right, two non-Power 5s. But going out to opposite directions, I thought yeah. Charlotte gave Brad Lambert a very raw deal. He never should have been fired, in my opinion. Um, given what he was trying to navigate through. And so I think they're kind of going the other way. So you could maybe see Charlotte just fall apart yeah, in 2020. Best case scenario, I think, for uh, Troy in 2020 is that it's sort of like Appalachian State was to start the uh, 2016 uh, season and all that exactly. stuff. So, so, hey, uh, Troy, you know, go out and recruit a kicker or else. You know, that's the Vols are a fest. Avino Westbrook going to UConn, that is not a good look for the Lady Vols. Uh, any thoughts there? <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is an ugly look. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I will say this, though. I'm curious how she'll manage with uh, Gina Oriyama. Now, I will say Gina Oriyama, more than even, more to a degree than even the Lady Vols did her. I, I think that maybe Avina has done a pretty good job of cases. Whereas, you know, even in past Summit Payday with our dynasty, yeah, you had the Candace Parker years, and then you had Shamika Holtzball. But, like, mm -hmm. when you look at the national championship run, particularly her first three, there's not, like, that standout name, like, the way he does with Maya Moore, Diana Taurasi, uh, Brianna um, Westbrook, and then, uh, uh, um, obviously, Rebecca Lobo, the first one. So, I, I think that's kind of the interesting thing about UConn. Last question. Uh Uh, correcting them real fast. In uh, just a minute, though, Jared Guarantano graduating early. But I just wonder, now that he's going to be doing master's classes, and, you know, do you think this might actually give him the chance to maybe concentrate on football a little bit more? And maybe that, uh, you know, 